Yes, yes, it's Uncle Jegs. And in today's video, we'll be looking at what you need to know from the microscopy unit of the combined science, GCSC. Bear things are going in today. We'll be covering the history of the microscope, how to label your microscope, how to prepare a slide, how to use your light microscope, and finally, how to calculate magnification. If you're doing some last minute revision, check the timestamps below, okay? And while you're down there, make sure you download the worksheet for today and the answers from last week's video. All right, let's get started. The idea that the world and even our bodies are covered with tiny living creatures has been around since like the 5th century BCE in Jainism religion. But scientists thought that was all air until the late 17th century when a Dutch businessman developed a lens to check the quality of his gums. His microscope was a bit nuts still. You placed your sample here and you looked through here. No lie, it made you look a right muppet but it was all for science. Now lenses were already on the scene before Anton van Leeuwen, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek? Huh? Um, uncle, I think it's pronounced Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. <laughs> Safe for that. Now lenses were already on the scene before my guy did his thing, but the difference was the magnifying power. The best lenses of them times could barely manage to magnify like 50 times, but van Leeuwenhoek took the mick, his could magnify like 270 times, so he was the first breeder to see bacteria, sperm cells and all them other cells. He published his work to the scientific community, however, they thought he was gassing. My, oh my, that is I Anthony got part. But one of the OG scientists, Robert Hooke, repeated his experiment and then it became accepted. Robert Hooke had previously invented a microscope that had two lenses. He was also the one that coined the term cell because the plant samples that he was researching resembled the cells in a monastery. Now fast forward to the 1930s, a couple of scientists invented the electron microscope which used electrons instead of light. Since electrons are so much smaller than visible light, they are better able to bounce off all the small indentations of objects and carry that shape back to your detector. This means that electron microscopes have a better resolving power. This is the ability to distinguish between two separate points. The higher the resolution, the more details you can see. Just look at the difference in the detail. Oh yeah, since electrons are smaller than wavelengths of light, the images that come out of electron microscopes are black and white, but scientists just add false colours to them to make them look nice, innit? Kind of makes you a bit itchy, doesn't it? The air in your sample also has to be removed because it will interact with your electrons, so every image that you see from an electron microscope is technically a corpse. It's literally dead. Here's a typical light microscope. You need to be able to label this. Going clockwise, yeah? You've got the eyepiece. This is where you pre your sample. The lens in here is times 10. Then you have your coarse focusing wheel. This helps you focus in big steps, right? Then you have your fine focusing wheel. This helps you focus finely in smaller steps. Underneath, you've got your light or your mirror. This allows light to pass through your object into your eye. You have your stage, which keeps your slide in place. And then here you've got your objective lenses. You've got three of them um, with different magnification. You've got your red one, which is times four, your yellow, which is times 10, and your blue, which is times 40. To prepare your sample, in this example, um, we'll be making an onion slide. These are the steps. Number one, you add a drop of water to your slide. Number two, you separate a layer of your onion. Number three, you peel off a layer of the epidermal tissue from the inner side of your onion. Number four, you use forceps to place this on your water drop. Number five, make sure that your onion layer is flat on your slide. Number six, you add a drop of your stain. If you add too much, just soak it up with some um, paper towels. Soak up the excess with your paper towels. And number seven, the important one, you lower your cover slip using forceps. Doing that prevents bubbles forming in your sample. Now that your slide's prepared, this is how you're gonna use your light microscope. Number one, you turn your objective lens to the lowest position. Look at it from the side. 
turn your course focusing wheel until it's almost touching the slide. Number three, now look through the eyepiece and turn the course focusing wheel in the opposite direction, increasing the distance between the stage and the lens. Number four, when the cells come into focus, rotate to a higher magnification. Number five, slightly rotate your fine focusing wheel until it's fully focused. And now for the calculation. Ah, this is boring. Uncle, can I go to the toilet? No. So to calculate magnification and size, you need to fully appreciate that microscopes make small things bigger. If you truly appreciate that sentence, then working out the calculation is light work. Let's build our equation. Look at our diagram again. Our small object goes here. The larger image is formed here. Using these three boxes, pause the video and see if you can work out what goes where to form our equation. Remember I said that the object goes here, so on the bottom. The larger image is formed on the top, so magnification has to go on the bottom for our triangle. So to remember what goes where, you place your real object on the bottom. You view your larger image size on the top. And so to get from here to here, you need to magnify at the bottom here. But that's not all. You have to be able to rearrange this equation as well. Check this example. Your total magnification is times 40 because you're using a times four objective lens and your eyepiece lens is times 10. The image of the object you see is one millimeter. You need to work out the real size. So from my equation triangle, when I cover real size, I see that what I need to do is my image size divided by my magnification. And when I do that, that gives me 0.025 millimeters. Now watch this next example. You are looking at a sample that gives you an image of 0.1 millimeters. You are working at a magnification of times 40. Calculate the diameter of the cell. When you get questions like these that are in a big paragraph, first thing you should do is highlight what you have been given in the question and what you have been asked to calculate. Clock that we have an image size of 0.1 millimeter. Our magnification is times 40. The question is asking us to calculate the actual diameter, which is another way of just saying the size of your real object. Don't fall for that trap. Write your equation and sub in your numbers. Rearrange the thing. Calculate the thing. When you get a question with an answer like this, check the question carefully because they may want you to fix your prefix. I'm gonna flex on this one and because it makes more sense to have my answer in micrometers instead of millimeters. Check out my video on animal and plant cells and prefixes to get up to speed but we'll just quickly do a quick thing here. A micrometer is a thousand times smaller than a millimeter. So we move our decimal three spaces to the right. This is the same as multiplying timesing your answer by a thousand. That gives us 2.5 micrometer, which means that the object is probably a mitochondria or a chloroplast. Now try this example. Highlight what they've given you, what you need to work out, underline, wherever. Write out your equation, sub your numbers in, rearrange, oh, we don't need that here. Calculate the thing. Okay, let's wrap all of this up. We looked at the history of the microscope, how you should go about preparing your slide, how you should use the light microscope and how you can calculate and rearrange the magnification equation. This isn't one of the physics equations that you need to memorize, but it's good to know. Be sure to rewatch if you need to rewatch this. Also, check out the description for today's worksheet and the answers to the previous worksheet on cell differentiation. I aim to make a video per week, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out. And if you like what you saw, then like what you saw in a bit.